The Add Page or Text Block tool is a flexible and powerful option in Schoology that allows you to put content, links, and video all in one page. Let's explore a few of those options. First, go into one of the folders you've created in your course and use the Add Materials button to add a page or text block. All pages require a title, and beneath that you will see a rich text editor. If you hover over each of the buttons on that toolbar, Schoology will give you a description of each. Let me build a sample page with a table, a picture, and some links to readings on the web. To insert a table, you use this tool. I'm just going to insert a simple 2x1 table. White space is really important when others are reading online, so adding a picture on one side of your page really helps to balance your text and pictures. To insert my picture, I'll use that Insert Content button and choose Image slash Media. Before I do, you can see that this is also where special symbols and the equation editor can be accessed. When I choose Image slash Media, I can attach or upload a picture from my computer. Or if I want to add a picture that is already on the web, I can use this option and paste in the link to the picture. To find that link, you just go to a new tab, do an image search to find your picture and right click on it to copy the image URL. Return back to your Schoology tab and paste in that link. Choose Insert Media and you'll see the picture appear on the page and you can click on it to easily resize it. As I type, my table expands to fit my text and of course I can copy and paste text in that I already have in a Google Doc or in a Word Doc. And then I can use the other features on the toolbar like text size, color, highlighting, and bulleting, or numbering to make my text more readable. If I want to link to an outside website or web resource, I have two options that look very different. At the bottom of my page, I have a series of additional icons. The first lets me upload a file from my computer for students to view or download. The second one allows me to link something, more on that soon. This one lets me attach something that already lives in my Schoology resources. And this microphone lets me record an audio message that anyone visiting this page can listen to. Kind of attaches at the bottom of the page. So that chain link icon that you see here is also available on our main page editor toolbar. So let's see how they're different. If I add a link at the bottom of the page, it will be included in a list of items at the bottom of my page. I am able to remove the link and reinsert it, but I can't edit it. If you want a little bit more control over how your links appear, then you will probably like using this main area of the page to add hyperlinks within your text. To do so, you just need to highlight the text that you want to be hyperlinked and then click that chain link icon in your toolbar. I typically set my link to open in a new tab also so that my students can easily just close that tab and get right back into this Schoology course. Putting my links in this way also allows me to easily update or change them. So let me choose create so you can see the difference. When you click create, you may end up in page outline view like I just did. So you'll just scroll down to the page you created and click on its name to view it. You can see that hyperlink at the bottom of my page that I added can be removed by clicking the X, but I don't have any options here to edit it. So if your link changes, you just need to delete it and re-add it. It's up to you whether you prefer your links down here in a list at the bottom, or if you like them in the middle of the page hyperlinked within the text. Your document attachments will always be listed here at the bottom of the page unless you want to upload them into Google Docs, and then they just act like any other hyperlink to anything else on the web. So let me use my gear icon to go back in and edit my page. You can see I'll be able to change my hyperlink that's inside the page text if I put my cursor anywhere inside this link, and then click on that chain link icon in the toolbar. While I'm editing, I also don't like this table border, so I'm going to click anywhere on my table and click the border button to toggle it off, and I will indent my text a little bit to make it more readable. All right, so now let's explore those advanced items in the editor. So embedding items like a video, a Google Calendar, or other web items is covered in other videos, but for those of you who know HTML, you'll see that option to toggle to HTML view if you'd like. 
where you can do a lot of those embedding kinds of tasks. There are also some advanced tools listed at the very bottom of the page. The first one lets me add Common Core or State Standard Learning Objectives to this page. The next icon lets me know whether the page is visible to my students or not. If I've not hidden the folder that I put this page in, it will always default to being visible. But if I need to, I can easily hide the page or show it just by clicking this icon back and forth. The last icon can be very handy when used sparingly. If I select this, the content on this page will be listed in a separate text block inside my Schoology folder. If I leave it as the default, the content just becomes one of those items, those kind of sub items in a folder like everything else. So this is a lot easier for me to show than explain with words. So let me choose to display it on a new page and you will see the difference. Now from outline view, my content on my page is immediately visible instead of students clicking on the page's title to see what's on that page. So let me reorder this to put it at the top of this list of items in my folder, which makes a lot more sense if I'm using this feature to highlight or call attention to this item. Reordering things inside a folder is done by just dragging and dropping the page title to where you'd like that page to be. For really important information or announcements, setting up a page like this can be handy, but I tend to use it rarely because I've trained my students to start at the list of pages at the very top and navigate through everything using the previous and next buttons. But if you have something that's really, really important, that display on a new page option is very handy. It just takes up a lot of screen space. And remember when you are building your pages that students do typically progress through courses by clicking the next and previous buttons. So when you are putting text on a page, think of it as a page in one book. You don't want to add too much text to any one page. I try to design my pages so that my readers have very little, if any, scrolling to do to see the content on the page. There's no limit to the number of pages you can have in a folder, so you can just chunk out your information into easily readable sections on separate pages. So practice creating some pages in one of the folders in your practice course. Add some text, images, tables, and even practice some hyperlinking items to your page.